When I got my first CNC router, I just wanted to make something. I bought it because of the things I could make. One of the problems I ran into was I didn't know what bits I needed in order to make what I wanted to make. The way I eventually got there was by spending hundreds of dollars and honestly buying bits I didn't need that I never used because it wasn't what I needed to make what I wanted to make. Over the years, I've tried all of the major CNC router bit brands that are currently on the market today. I learned a lot. I took that experience and I came up with a solution to this problem. For the first time, I wanna introduce you to Andy Bird Build Bits. Starting right now, my set of router bits are available on andybirdbuilds.com. The amount of projects you can make with just these three bits is amazing. And actually coming up a little later in the video, I'm gonna do three projects uh, using just these three bits. The files that I use to make those projects will actually be available on my website as well, and they're included free with a purchase of my set of bits. Bits are consumables, and we all need them. So even if you're not interested in these particular projects, uh, when you do need bits, it would be really cool if you could come and pick up a set. Before we jump into those projects, I wanna tell you a little bit more about these specific bits. It includes a quarter inch down cut bit, which is great for all your profile, cutting out your profiles, or clearing pockets, but it leaves a nice clean finish on top. The second bit is a 60 degree V groove bit. Now, this is great for medium to small lettering. It's not gonna do really tiny lettering very well. You'd have to go to a steeper angle, but this is in the middle, so it covers the middle ground size of text really well. So any V carving or lettering on, on anything, this bit has got it covered. The third bit, and probably the most underrated bit of all time, is the bowl and tray bit. Now this bowl and tray bit is a three quarter inch diameter and it has a quarter inch radius on the bottom. I use this to make trays, to make bowls, but also you can even clear large amounts of material uh, with this bit relatively quickly. It's basically just a three quarter inch straight cut bit. Now like I said, all three of these are quarter inch shanks, so you don't have to mess with different collets or sizing, just straightforward, and it covers a wide range of different applications in CNC. So a few months ago when I started thinking about this, I identified some key characteristics that I had to have. That list was pretty lengthy, but the top ones were they had to be manufactured in the United States. I wasn't gonna do it if I had to import them. They had to be manufactured in the United States. The second thing was a reputation of quality. I also wanted them to be affordable and uncoated. I'll go into greater detail about that in a future video, but I wanted them to be affordable and cost effective. After approaching and talking with several different manufacturers, I decided to partner with Whiteside Machining. They checked all the boxes and more. I'll be sharing more about the bits as we get into these projects. I came up with and designed the three original projects that I thought were cool and unique. My goal was to demonstrate the uh, versatility of these bits and all the things that were possible. And ultimately, all the many projects that you can make with just these three bits. First, let's make this wiener dog tray for Delilah. If you were to ask me if I or someone I knew had a wiener dog named Delilah, the answer would be no. This is just what came to my mind. So if you or someone you know has a wiener dog uh, named Delilah, let me know down in the comments and I'll send this to you. The first, the first wiener dog named Delilah wins the wiener dog uh, tray. I started with an inch thick piece of walnut for this project with the dimensions of seven by 11 by one inch thick. The first tool path is a pocketing tool path using the bowl and tray bit. I did this to a depth of 0.4 inches. Then using the same bit, I tightened up the step over to get a smooth finish down to our final depth of a half an inch. Next, I changed out the bowl and tray bit for the 60 degree V groove bit and V carved the lettering on the bottom of the tray. One thing that you have to be careful of here is running into the walls. So make sure you leave plenty of room between the edge of your text and the wall of your, the bottom of your tray. I switched out the 60 degree V bit for the quarter inch down cut bit to do the final outer profile tool pad. Next, let's make this steak plate. 
I used a 16 by 14 by one inch piece of poplar for this project. Any hardwood would really work here. I made them out of cherry before, but this is just what I had on at this time. The first toolpath uses the same strategy as the first project. I roughed out the pocket with the bowl and tray bit to a depth of 0.25 inches, and then came back and did a finishing pocket toolpath with the same bit and tighter step over to a final depth of 0.375 inches. The combination of these sharp bits and this strategy, you get such a smooth, clean pocket. Then I swapped out the bowl and tray bit for my down cut bit and made the juice groove. I actually made this project for last summer for the first time and I tested it out. We are in grilling season and I had to cook up a steak, but it's still one of my favorite projects to date. Lastly, let's make this coffee bar sign. I made this sign out of half inch MDF, which I got from Lowe's. It's actually made in two layers. I have a base layer and a top layer. This project uses the V-groove bit and the down cut bit. First, I loaded the down cut bit up and cut the circle base and the letters on the top layer using a profile tool path. Then I switched over to the 60 degree V-groove to put a chamfer on the outside edge of the top layer. This just takes it up a notch and gives it a nice, clean, smooth look. Then for the final tool path, I switched back to the quarter inch down cut bit to cut the outer profile of the top layer. Now that I'm saying this out loud for the first time, I should have started with the 60 degree bit and cut that chamfer first and then did all my profile tool paths with my down cut. It would have saved me one tool change and that makes more sense. So I will set up the file to do that. As you can see, there are just so many different tool paths and techniques and things you can make with just these three bits. If you wanna make these projects yourself, these files will be available on my website, or you can get a free set of these files with the purchase of my set of bits. Click the first link in the description to be taken directly there. If you're using Vectric software, I will have the CRV files available, which has all the tool paths and everything set up ready for you. If you're not using Vectric software, uh, I'll include the SVGs where you can upload the artwork and then you'll have to input the feeds and speeds and tool paths yourself, but still completely possible. So obviously this is something I'm really excited about and I hope you are too. If you pick up a set of bits, thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Uh, supporting small, my small business uh, means so much to me. If you want more inspiration, I've got five more projects right here that you can make on your CNC. I'll see you in that video.